how uh, I want to say uh, to God be the glory. Uh, I give them all the credit uh, for our student athletes, our players, our administration, all of our former players who have played before Liberty University. Uh, this season and this win is for all of those people, and uh, I'm so proud of this football team uh, when they could have given up a whole lot of time this season, but they have not given up, and uh, they continue to fight. They continue to love each other. Uh, they continue to understand what the belief is, what faith is, what teamwork is, and uh, they have demonstrated that throughout the whole football season. So I'm so proud of them. I'm just glad and privileged and honored to be their head football coach. And uh, again, to God be the glory. Coach, going into halftime, what was your uh, biggest emphasis as far as adjustments to come out in the second half? Well, I think the biggest thing is obviously number one, take care of the football. I mean, we're strong with ourselves. Uh, they didn't do anything that was preventing from us. We just said, just stay uh, calm, continue to play the play that you need to play. Defensively, we thought we had a good, <clears throat> good opportunity to uh, stop them. We just had to make sure that we didn't have our defense on the field a whole lot. So, great job by our coach, members, our defensive coordinator. We did a great job. And again, our players did a great job in the, the second half, like they know how to play. Coach, as far as the offense is concerned in the second half, did you feel that you needed to get the run game started and that therefore substituting uh, Todd making it a little bit more? Yeah, we, we um, thought that uh, Todd was ready to go a little bit more and DJ had banged up a little bit of the play. Uh, but again, we did say uh, he'd run the ball a little bit more, be a little bit more patient uh, as far as him run a little bit longer. But uh, we knew we still throwing the football. We just wanted to uh, mix it up a little bit more balanced. Coach, lastly, what were Jab and Chichani's reads on that fake field goal? What did he see to make him keep the ball? Uh, we gave him a signal if we knew if they were going to be blitzing from the uh, our right side, their left side. And so we gave him a signal to go ahead and run it. Uh, and so he was reading one guy. If one guy took the guy, the receiver, he was going to take off running. If they came up and played him, then he's going to throw the football. So we had a, uh, an option on that, of course, two reads. And uh, so he did a great job of doing the read and uh, making the first down. Nico, this is two weeks in a row where you guys have had some struggles in the second quarter and completely turning around after halftime to hold Coastal and JMU both scoreless after the break. I mean, what were the adjustments? What was the talk in the locker room? Um, I think we just had to come out and just keep playing uh, our type of football. I think in the first half, um, you know, some guys just got caught in the mix of, you know, not necessarily doing their job the way it's supposed to be done. So, you know, second half, our uh, defensive corner didn't come in and scream at us and beat us up. Man, he just you know, go out and play your game, play the football that we want to play. And um, defensive line, we got to continue to get pressure on the quarterback. And, and so we didn't really didn't make a whole lot of adjustments. We just continued to play our football, which I think we did that well in the second half. Josh, uh, four turnovers in the first half, but you guys were able to get that under control after halftime. Uh, was there just a little bit of rust on your part for being out for a couple of games, or, or did it take you a while to get into it? Uh, no, I, you know, some plays happened the way they did. And, um, you know, I'm, I was really impressed with our defense. You know, like you said, we had four turnovers. And, um, 21 points, it's not necessarily on them. You know, we, we turned the ball over way too much in the first half. And then uh, you saw what happened in the second half. We didn't turn, turn the ball over, and you know, they shut them out. So um, it was awesome. We had a great second half, and uh, we did what we needed to do to win tonight. <coughs> Josh, you said you wanted to be, you know, the quarterback that came in here and helped get this program over the hump, get into the playoffs, and now get them to a first playoff win. I mean, what, did, what does this mean when to you? This win mean to you? Uh, it's big, you know, it's especially not being able to, you know, play with my team these past two weeks, and then you know, coming in here and just being able to, you know, get this win. You know, it was such a team win. It was so big. Um, I can't, I can't thank our coaches enough. You know, we did so good in the second half, and even in the first half, you know, we were, we were really driving on them, and then we would just have turnovers at inopportune times. And um, once we got a roll in the second half, you know, there's not much they could do to stop us. Really. Yeah, you know, uh, my quarterback coach, Chris Daly, always talks about, you know, stuff is going to happen, whether you like it or not, whether it was a good play, a bad play, a bad call, you know, a bad route, whatever, it's, whatever it may be, you know, bad stuff is going to happen, and you just have to you know, understand that that's, that's part of football, that's just, it's going to happen eventually, and you can't beat yourself up about it, you can't get down on yourself, and more importantly, you can't get, you know, mad at, at people outside of your football team, you know, you can't let, you know, the stands or the fans up there or the refs or anything like that really, you know, take you away from your goal and we did a really good job in, in the second half of you know, shutting out the outside um, you know, things that were trying to mess us up so I think um, we did a great job of really moving forward and you know coming
Well, we just fixed up our coverages. I think our defensive staff did a great job of just changing up the coverages on them. We also try to get our guys to put their hands on the receivers so when they were up jamming them. So we press sometimes, sometimes we bail. So again, a great change up for our coaching staff. Bring the coach or Josh, talk about that final drive that you guys had. I think it was 17 plays, 11 minutes. Obviously, that's crucial. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think Coach Stamar, the coordinator, said it was 22 plays. So you know, I don't know how how long we had. I know that we had double digits on the clock, and then we had about you know, three minutes left when we finally finished. But uh, you know, that was just really us. You know, all our hard work in the weight room, on the on the, on the field, uh, you know, in the film room, just understanding. You know, we have to put the team away. And that was really you know a testament to our strength coach and our coaches and everyone that's always you know taught us to finish and not just you know settle for. Things. That was a great thing for our offense, you know. It took so much time off the clock and really, um, you know, kind of laid the hammer down on them and, you know, told them that we weren't going to go away. And uh, to me, that was one of the biggest turning points in the game. Turner, I think you said you guys could play fast or slow. <coughs> Is that 11 minute drive that kind of an example of just keeping it out of their hands and, and doing what you guys do? No, I think that was an example of just totally uh, uh, our offensive line I'm taking care of the line of scrimmage, running backs, running hard, and tight ends blocking. And, uh, that's kind of our game, being able to have a balanced offense, being able to run the ball, being able to throw the ball and, and mix it up. So uh, again, it's just a, a great total overall win. Some of those key third downs that Josh was escaping from pressure and completing those passes, I mean, was that nerve wracking or were you kind of comfortable with your offense in that situation? I'm comfortable with it, I trust it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dominique, um, he's going up against their offense. Could you sense them getting frustrated at all when they weren't really moving or what did you see from their side? Oh yeah, definitely. I think that uh, we knew that they executed at a high level. Um, they kind of knew that they are who they are, and they were going to do what they, you know, came to do in their way. But I think that um, you know we just kept playing, we kept playing hard, and I did see them getting frustrated at each other, some of the offensive linemen and the protections and different things against different games that we ran, and um, I think it worked out well for us. And, um, and Can you kind of just describe your game plan against Badly? Um, just in general, some things you guys tried to, to limit him. Yeah, well, we knew that he was very athletic. We knew he has great legs and he could run, um, but he does like to stay in the pocket and pass the ball. And so we ran a lot of games, you know, just sorts of things on our defensive line, trying to get pressure on him. And then um, a big thing that we had to do was try and contain him with our defensive tackles who are who wrapping around or our defensive ends on the edge. And, uh, you know, he did escape a couple of times. You know, that's going to happen. We're not going to play a perfect game. But, um, yeah, just trying to get pressure on him and get him off his spot when he's passing. And in that second quarter when they scored those, those 21 points, their their offense really got going and they went up-tempo. And then in the third quarter, you guys kind of got those three and outs. Was that kind of the key to just getting off the field on some of those third downs? For them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, because we got them in third down and fourth down many times in the first half, but we weren't able to get off the field. And so in the second half, you know, we you know we kind of anticipated getting them in third down and fourth down again. And um, the difference was just being able to get off the field. And when we get off the field and put the offense back on the field, I mean, they just chewed up the clock so much, and they helped us out a lot. You know, we were able to rest ourselves and then come back. And so it was a great team win, you know, offense holding on to the ball, you know, being in there a long time, and the defense keep up with you. Coach, what did you say to your guys at halftime to make uh, the adjustment after that rough second quarter? And then what did you say after the game? Well, uh, at halftime, we just uh, just uh, stay within the game plan. Uh, we still have a, a lot of game left. We trust each other and uh, just play our game. Uh, good things are going to happen for you if you continue to play hard. Uh, we got some good things going. And, uh, we, we just got to play better than what we played in the first half. And then uh, after the game, um, just really, I guess in a sense, I, uh, Jerry uh, Falwell Jr. came in and gave him the game ball. And, uh, so uh, he got the ball there. He got good hands. I'm like prize possession. Man. No doubt about it. So that was the main thing we talked about in the locker room. Proud of our football team and proud of our university. Josh, can you just take us through the play the near fumble that was almost a total disaster that you were able to pick back up and I mean if that if they get that ball there it's they've got the ball in the one yard line and instead it turns into a plus play for you guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of what you just said, you know, is um, they just brought, you know, one more from the edge and we could blitz or then we could block and um, got um, Tom Hawk me down and um, I just saw it bounce around, and I saw you know, our, our, our running back or someone went to dive for it, missed it. So I was just following him, picked it up, and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't drop this. This, this is the worst place to have a fumble. And um, 
uh, yeah, we were very, very fortunate to get that. And um, I think I think Jamie did a really good job of you know disguising some blitzes and uh, really getting pressure on me tonight. Um, didn't necessarily rattle me, but there were some you know opportune times where they had some some big plays. You know, obviously that fumble and then um, the the fumble early in the game when we were down in the red zone uh, was big. Um, yeah, hats off to their coach. I think they did a great job of getting their guys ready to play. And Turner, one more for you. The uh, <coughs> Uh, Kenny Scott's interception right before halftime. How big was that just to kind of spit this, dispel the momentum? I mean, they, they had a chance to go up 28-10 there. Instead, you went in the locker room feeling you know, pretty decent considering the turnover situation. Well, it was good also that they didn't have a chance for a field goal. You know, that four more points would make a difference in the ball game too uh, toward the end of the game. So great job by Kenny. Uh, he's one of our best uh, players, one of our best guys, particularly one-on-one -on -one coverage. So that was definitely a big play in the ball game there to keep him out of the end zone. With first, uh, it's the first time Liberty has uh, beaten a CAA team on the road. Just kind of what that means to uh, this Liberty program. Uh, it's big. You know, we've always sort of had the you know the stigma around Liberty that you know we can't win in in state. You know, we can't beat a CAA team, or whatever it may be. But um, I think we proved that tonight that you know we can really do anything we want as long as we you know, execute and follow the coach's game plan and um, just trust in God. So uh, it's big. You know, getting a CAA win and you know especially JMU. We I think. We lost eight straight or something to them or something like that. So it's big, you know, snap that and just, um, you know, we were two for one in in-state uh, competition, the FCS with Norfolk State and then JMD obviously lost to Richmond earlier. But uh, I think that shows, you know, how good our coaching is and how much this program has grown in the past couple of years. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck next week.